Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Canada Tuber. Today I will be discussing about the client information document, how to prepare it, what all the SOPs and the other documents that need, we need to include in the client information video. Uh, specifically for the student who's applying for the study visa in Canada under the non-SDS category. So the countries who are eligible for like it, most of the countries are eligible only for the non-STS category and for the STS they are very limited about the count of 20-30 countries who are eligible under the uh, student direct stream category. But now uh, in countries such as Nigeria, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and many more countries they are only eligible for the non-STS category. So for them, either it's the only student who is applying under the non-STS category or it's with the spouse or with the kids. This is how the client information of a student under the non-STS category looks like. See, the first is the table of content. I would say it's if you'll, you'll find the structure of the documentation on how that's structured. Uh, this is the navigation pane on the left. Um, uh, so it's mostly the same uh, navigation pane is the structuring because I've already given the headings for these all uh, 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 segments. Let's begin on that. It's the first the we'll include the statement of purpose. Then will be the applicant documents. Under applicant documents, it will be academic, professional, financial, and other documents. Let's begin on the applicant statement of purpose. That is the first section that we need to include name, passport, mobile number, email ID, course applied university. This is a brief structure on how your initial uh, things you need to include, like to whom should be addressed. Here, yes, sir, ma'am, subject is there. A brief statement um, that you, you are uh, giving the application for the study visa. Uh, the question that you need to address is briefly talk about your experience and industry expertise in which industry are you working in assume a marketing specialist or a data analyst or a number of industries are there or uh, electrical engineer so and so forth where are you working what's your experience talk about the course and the university that you got shortlisted in when is the course starting uh, then is the academic and professional documents like in 2010 I graduated from XYZ University you uh, completed a course with this and uh, what were all the subjects that you studied in a nutshell like in the undergraduate uh, you need to provide the name of the undergraduate course marks subjects learned year passed any distinction extracurricular activities such as any uh, clubs that you have joined any uh, achievements or like Olympiads that you participated, any uh, awards that you won. Then is the graduate course, assume a master's degree or a PG diploma. Uh, the graduate course, marks, year pass, subjects learn, any distinctions in extracurricular activities that you need to elaborate. Then is the professional. Uh, before starting with the professional, like uh, this, this is where in the professional it starts. I would say whichever course that you have studied or a university that wherein you have studied, uh, you need to provide the basic, uh, name, basic brief description of the university. Example, it's an I, if if it's an IIT, uh, the top engineering college of India. Uh, right or globally ranked uh, 10th college of uh, engineering college of the world so you can write these all statements in any university that you can write it might be a uh, nation's first it might be states first or it might be might be the regions first exume bangalore's top university right so you need to include these all statements to make sure that uh, the specific sop has a weightage and you are a skilled professional so uh, your SOP will be compared with the lot of other SOPs across all the students, uh, those who are applying for the study visa, that therefore you have to differentiate your SOP with the others. Then is the I started my career as a business analyst or whatever that uh, you are, uh, you started it. Uh, explain your career progression that first you worked in this company then you worked in that company in the year this earlier you were business analyst then you were senior business analyst and then you were manager what were your roles and responsibilities in every company right so first is the career progression then is the roles and responsibility in every company what all your major projects that you executed that help you grow in your company provide description of all employers 
like among the top data analytics company based out of Dubai or top marketing company of India or of Mumbai, whatever that case is. Mm. What awards and recognition you received in all your companies provide technical certifications achieved and technologies learned? How you applied these technologies, example Python, in your company or and automated processes? Any online course you enrolled, like on DataCamp, Co Coursera, etc. Uh, after you have completed your academics, that's the major heads of academic and professional profile, you also list down the certifications. This is one of the main areas where you need to differentiate that you are a skilled professional, right? It's not that you are doing a basic job, but you have, if, apart from the career progressions, you have also achieved these all certifications. So just differentiate those as well in a separate section. List all the certifications you received with their technology name, certification, verification ID, date and expiry. Why Canada? Uh, promote Canadian universities over all other international and domestic colleges or universities. Describe the Canadian universities are among the top in the world. Uh, so nowhere, just don't compare the cost uh, analysis of like uh, it's costly in uh, India and you know, it's costly in Canada or it's costly in Bangladesh or costly in Canada. Uh, so don't compare all those things. Just describe the positive things about Canada. Describe the diversified population, culture of Canada that will help you learn new concepts. Describe that the same course was not available in your home country and you are passionate of about doing that particular course why that particular course from the xyz university now there is a there are few things that you need to cater to differentiate your university from all other ones in the world and list down the positive points of the university like university rank renowned professors alumni network uh, diversity among students etc in the university Explain the leadership management technical skills that you will gain in the university. Explain the key subjects such as decision making, data, data management, statistics, etc. that you will learn uh, from the course. And you uh, compare it these all courses that you haven't learned or you learn just the basic concepts in your previous academic uh, durations. Explain how the course will help you in your uh, experience in, for, for your for the experienced professionals if you are the uh, experienced professionals so you also need to differentiate that you will gain management skills leadership skills and so and so forth then is the future plans see future plans there are number of instances where I uh, on the on the YouTube videos or I also have seen that uh, it's basically uh, just three four lines that you have described why I say that future plans is very important because it also helps you to solidify your home ties. So let's do one thing like in I assume that uh, someone is in Bangladesh and it's Bangladesh it's we are uh, we need to provide qualitative as well as the quantitative market growth. So Bangladesh job market is flourishing. So what we need to do is we need to provide both qualitative and the quantitative data. So Bangladesh is in a course to become 1 trillion economy by 2040, uh, driven by the consumer optimism, innovation in the emerging sectors, emer emerging economic sectors and young engaged workforce. According to BCG with the average annual growth rate of 6.5 years between this and this, the Southeast nation has outpaced its peers such as in India, Indonesia and Vietnam. So this is the point wherein you are actually fetching the data from the other online data uh, reports or there are other sources from Google, uh, but you are solidifying your home ties. It means that uh, Bangladesh is flourishing. You, even though you are going to Canada, but you don't want it to stay in Canada because there are a lot of prospects in Bangladesh. Therefore, you will definitely come back. This is how you uh, you make your SOP stronger as well as you improve your differentiation uh, differentiation factor with the other candidates. Any industry specific growth statistics such as data analytics, market growth in Bangladesh, or assume an economy we already talked about the overall economy but now we are also talking about the specific industry that i'm working on right so on both the parameters we have provided the data relate the industry and the country growth with your aspirations to come back to your home country 
explain your long term goals to be employment generator entrepreneurs or be on the president or director level positions in the renowned companies in in your home country only never say about the global multinational companies right so if it's in india just talk about infosys tcs and that's it um elaborate your that your siblings parents friends in laws and others in your home country are in your home country therefore um, after completion of the course you will go back in the conclusion it's very basic that declare that you are aware of the canadian immigration laws you have paid the amount and the uh, and have the balance of x amount in your uh, bank balance overall financial you need to elaborate um, apart from that you also need to provide the ielts scorecard uh, elaborate on your earning in the financial section per month earnings your spouse earnings or your parents earning if they are sponsoring you have the investments in mutual funds insurance provident fund gold and more therefore you won't face any financial challenges you have given your ielts marks so are you humbly request that you process your application grant us grant you the visa so that you can study in that particular university just this is the basic uh, declaration so the please sign attach the failing documents of me your name academic documents is there so the only difference is you that in in the sts category this sections it's it's separate we need to upload the education section however now we don't have that particular section uh so these i'll i'll also explain one by one on the level so first the overall uh, this is the uh, applicant documents under applicant documents there are the different sections where we are uploading the data first is the academic you will all, you can also see these comparison here as well uh, that's bachelor transcript and degree that's masters or post graduate diploma transcripts and degree then is your ielts score card professional documents is your resume uh, and then the experience letters or roles and responsibility letters from all your previous company financial documents is your salary slips a uh, financial documents i would like to talk about is financial documents there are all, also a proof of funds document separately that we can upload uh, you, apart from that i would suggest you to include here as well the financial documents just to solidify that if someone is reviewing your documents so that uh, these officer can see the documents here also right no harm in that uh, so you can provide your salary slips income income tax returns bank balance certificates are there so see these are the salary slips pages are there income tax returns are there bank balance certificate is there uh affidavit of support is there from parents from siblings ca report is there and the others is police clearance certificate uh, however this is optional uh, if you are facing any difficulty in this you can ignore the pcc uh, so these are the uh, documents that you need to upload and this is the basic structure of the table of content why that is important is because usually the total count of uh, uh, pages goes close to about like 60 pages for a candidate even for in our case also it went to about like 60 pages so therefore it's good to include table of content so that visa officer can glance at specific section if he find that he is facing an issue with understanding a specific thing he can jump on that particular page as well so that's this is whole uh, basic structure of client information of a student of non sts category is uh, do subscribe to my channel for more informative videos um, wherever possible given the time i will definitely reply to all the comments that you give me any questions that you have on the videos i wish, I wish you all the best for your future endeavors bye bye